All right, uh, good evening, members of council, members of the public. Uh, glad to be back at the table here. It's been a while. The first item would be uh, adoption of the agenda. So moved. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Motion is carried. We have uh, one delegation this evening, and just to note that at 6 30, if we haven't completed the agenda, we'll be adjourning for a public hearing. Uh, the agenda uh, delegation here is Esther Stout and Aaron Gregory on the Community Garden Planning Committee. So welcome, ladies, and if you take the podium there. Thank you for uh, coming today. Thank you for having us here. My name is Esther Stout. This is Aaron Gregory. Um, we are here to ask for our uh, request for the Community Garden Planning Committee for the Development of the Garden Planning Committee. Um, we're here to ask for the Community
time frame issue for you here? Like, are we we're, we're too late for this year? Are you thinking next year? We're thinking next year. We'd love to have it operating April first. We do have a lot of excitement from our church and and other people. So we've got a steering committee and we've lots of people that have offered to help. So we'd love to keep it going through the summer and fall while the winters while the weather's dry yeah. and warm because we'll need to do fundraising and we'll need to build the lots and put up the fence and a lot of that will be um, projects that people will volunteer. And, and did you already pay the thousand seventy five? No, we haven't. So you're not looking for a reimbursement. You're looking us to just not charge you. That's your yes. Way. Is that kind of what However we're you want to work it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I'm just I'm just thinking in terms of um, we wouldn't normally deal with something like like this at the same meeting, and you brought up some issues here that perhaps our staff would probably want to respond to, or at least give us some rationale for what we're doing here. So as long as there's no big time issue. Then we've got a little bit of time to make it to do it yes. proper if we wanted to. Okay. Yeah, sure. That's great. Yeah, thank you.
principal use would be setbacks applied, right? And accessory uses, then you have some more uh, uh, allowances or uh, reduction restrictions in the zoning bylaw. So for that reason, um, the development variance permit would be required, which would allow us to, um, part of that is the automatic notification of all adjacent property owners right. of council's intent to consider. Um, in regards to the fee, we did advise uh, that administratively we have the ability, council has the ability to refund but not waive fees. Okay. And hence the, um, a fee would be required to be paid and then if council so uh, chose, then we would cut a check to essentially provide uh, So uh, staff would consider this and report back to us in due course. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. I just thank Two minutes meetings we have for approval of the June 17th council meeting minutes. Second. On approval then, all those in favor? It's carried. We have a uh, special meeting of council minutes for June 24th for approval as well. Second. All those in favor? It's carried. Those committee reports, uh, we have the management report for the seats. Second. Any questions? Um, So uh, we have rezoning application RZ 1411, uh, development permit application DC 1414 for 1770 Comox Avenue. And the recommendation is that Comox zoning bylaw amendment number 1791 be adopted. We want to make that motion. I'll move recommendations. Second. Okay. Discussion? Councillor Price. Uh, just, um, I do firmly believe that we could have done so much better. And uh, this is why I'm opposed to uh, four three. All right. Anyone else? Thank you. Well, I hope and trust that we've learned from the, the uh, from this regarding public consultation, and uh, uh, I uh, accepted the vote at the last council meeting. And I think steps have been taken by the town to uh, to ensure that there's public uh, consultation earlier in the process. And I think council had mentioned that when we had our last discussion that. Uh, uh, it's late in the process to be, uh, be looking at the changes. And, and so I'm confident that the, the town and the council will learn from this and we can move on. Uh, but there was a good message there that the public consultation process can be, should be done earlier and open to, uh, uh, to uh, review and, and changes then. All those in favor of adoption? Opposed? Uh, number two, the Comox State Development Agreement uh, Authorization Bylaw Number 1792-1770, Comox Avenue, be adopted. All those in favor? Carried. Opposed? Opposed? Carried. And then the Development Permit DP-1414 be issued subject to the Development Permit Conditions contained in Schedule 1 of the July 15, 2015 report on DP.
moving on the agenda. We have special reports. So we have some minutes from the Regional District Hospital at Salt Waste and the Regional District Board in June. You proceed. Okay. On all three of those minutes, all in favor? Ms. Carey? Next, we have staff reports uh, from our Director of Finance and Director of Home Grants and Referral Staff. Finance for that report. Any questions from members of council? Seeing none, we on. We have on the bylaws for adoption.
to a certain degree in terms of fire protection versus um, things like landscaping. The uh, BC Building Code does have protection uh, mechanisms built into it. So in this case, with reducing uh, the setback to 0.9 of a meter as your building is getting closer to the particular block line, uh, you go from start having those street buildings in terms of window openings, window openings that are not possible to flat, non-combustible wall assemblies, um, even in terms of roof overhangs. As you get closer, you start going to uh, sealed non-combustible sockets. So in terms of those types of spreading issues, those are addressed under, under the, as you get closer to a proper line of the building. Okay. So not a concern. No. Thank you. Right. Any further questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any closed questions? Uh, next item is a report from the Director of Finance on the Ortho Quota and VR contract and staff recommendations that receive the report and authorize the expenditure. Move. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Motion is carried. Next report is regarding the 2015 payment in lieu of tax payment from CF4 or for CFP Comox. And staff recommendations to receive the report and accept the payment in lieu of tax for CFP Comox for other people. So moved. Second. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay. Uh, next item is the development permit application. And staff recommendation is to be permit to be issued, subject to resolution of the outstanding items and to the conditions listed in the report. Second. Just before we vote on that, or answer any questions that the council may have, uh, CEO, can you tell me, tell us, sorry, why this uh, matter of the duplex is coming? So, the first application we've received uh, for such. The development and in the future, as the report noted, these would be approved at a stop level. Uh -huh. But we just wanted to bring this forward for council's attention to give you an idea of, of the kind of new development that we're seeing in the community for infant. Good. 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 Yeah, and what I believe this is phase one of possibly two on, on the, the adjacent lot right. there. They want to have a, a mirror image of what they're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. So that wouldn't necessarily. That'll occur. come back as a. Not necessarily the council, but the right. regular standard. Yeah. And see that no neighborhood notifications required. Unless otherwise directed, the uh, future of these applications. Go ahead. I'd just like to say I mean, it's a good design. I mean, the garage is in the middle, it gives a lot of privacy.
several people talking to me about how can we be running out of water, and there's just a lot of misinformation and confusion out there over the entire issue. So I asked at the RD that we put a communication piece that took into account social media, the television, the radios, and, and the newspapers to try and get the message out. A lot of people that I'm talking to don't even realize that we take the water out of the river rather than the lake, and they don't realize it. And a stat that came up to us um, was that if we don't get significant rain by September, we could run out of water. So that makes it a little more critical for most people, and, and I think it's something that people need to know, and I think they need to know a little bit of the history of our water system and how we got here and why we're where we're at and what needs to be done to, to solve this problem because there is a load of money that needs to be spent on our water system to bring it up to the standards that we need today. So that was brought up I don't know, pretty clearly, I think, at the, at the Water Committee meeting, so we, we await that happening, but uh, okay. I think that we need to get that public information piece out there. Uh, I don't think it's good enough to just say we're going to stage three water restriction. I think we need to actually get a better explanation of this. So. Okay, Councilor Grant, then Price. Thank you for that, Councilor Grant. Uh, I think education is key here. Also, a question I would, I would like to add to that is, as I was driving today around our community, I noticed that some lawns are brown and some lawns are green. Um, and I also read somewhere that, in fact, we do have someone, obviously, looking at that water conservation issue. Is that something that, that we are, is ongoing? Are we doing that now? Yeah, yes. Sure. I'll let our CEO speak that. Yes, we, we have entered into a contract with the regional district. They have a water enforcement officer who is actively patrolling. We also have our bylaw enforcement officer in the town who is responding to the water issue and water complaints. Uh, and on top of that, uh, the municipal engineer is here, but she can speak to perhaps that our public works department is also identifying these green lawns as a potential source of leaks in uh, service connection and there are steps being taken along those lines to investigate whether there is perhaps some leaks in our infrastructure that we can repair and again, conserve water. So enforcement is happening now then, is it? Yes, uh, enforcement and education and awareness. Okay. Some people are still claiming they don't know we're on a stage three. Tough to sell at this stage, but uh, we're working with people, and, and uh, some are getting a warning, and, and others, if they continue, uh, will be getting tickets. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, yes, and uh, further to Councillor Grant's comments on the water committee, uh, one of the actions we're looking at is uh, creating a, uh, a stage four, which we've never had before, which mm. would basically be water is for drinking water and household use only. Um, I, and I think, and I certainly agree with Councillor Grant about the need to put out the messaging and including too why the town is doing some watering because uh, you know I hear that too and, uh, and I think it's really important to point out the incredible investment that has gone into a particularly our Bullard Tree Boulevards with these trees, that we will just lose them otherwise. And I just wondered too, um, whether, do we use those uh, gator bags? Yes, we do. We do. Thank you. Yes. And I believe our park superintendent has just received a new order this week, and again, we're being implemented uh, throughout the community on the of our trees and other critical uh, areas. And, and some uh, local governments actually do sell them to the community because they are a good way to keep your trees alive in that they, you fill them up every week, I think, and they've got a little drip, so it's just enough water to keep the tree alive without having to do any, um, any extensive watering, so it might be something sure. that we can offer. Possibly for any of the street trees that are in our Mm -hmm. Frontages. Um, Director of Finance. Uh, we were the first municipality in the valley to deploy the tree gators, and you'll find tree gator bags of two different kinds. Uh, there's a kind of like a brown inner tube, and there's also the traditional green uh, bags. You'll find them across the street uh, from council chambers, and also on. Uh, uh, you'll see, if, you, if you're at the corner of Beaufort and Ellis, you'll see where they've actually zipped multiple bags together 
to wrap it around a larger tree. Councilor Good. Yes, I just, uh, first two points. First is the, uh, I agree with the points that were made earlier about continual education, uh, both regionally and for the town as far as uh, water usage and the changing uh, weather patterns that we're experiencing. Uh, secondly, though, I'd like to compliment the town uh, staff for their uh, the website because uh, for questions that were given in regards to water in the fields, etc., there was a very easy reference that you could reference to and refer people to the uh, town website which had an explanation about it and was uh, attractive and, and uh, informative and uh, very good for, for the layperson to understand that. It's the first step, though, in this continued education, and I think Councillor Grant hit it and nailed it on the head there, that uh, this needs to continue because uh, uh, this is the new reality of it. All right. Thank you for that, and uh, thank you for staff for bringing that information forward, and no doubt it will be reported. <coughs> So, I think we received all that. Uh, speaking of receipts, uh, we do have the annual report for 2014 for receipt. Second. And this will be adopted in formal uh, terms uh, at the next council meeting. We're probably a couple weeks behind where we should be on this, but it's been put together uh, for your review and consideration, and then it will be published uh, to uh, notify the public that it is available for review and then adoption. And this is a requirement we have to do by uh, June 30th of every year. So it's sort of retroactive looking at the year before. Any questions, comments? Very important. A lot of information there. Of course, it's been previously published in terms of financial statements and the like, and uh, strategic plans, but then there's an update as well. And it is a requirement so that we have this formally adopted at the next week. For receipt, then all in favor? All right, I think that leap brings us to correspondence. Um, we have the first letter from the Comox Valley American Rescue Society. Thanks for the support. Okay. And that is, of course, for their fundraising activities. Any further discussion? All in favor? BC regarding the proposed demolition of paper comes. On receipt, all those in favor? Any comments, concerns, questions? Seeing none, we'll move on. Next one does require a bit more than just receipt. That is the letter from the CBRD regarding the appointment of a council rep to negotiate the service withdrawal request. I move Paul Lodge goes. <laughs> Before my name gets <laughs> Yes, I'm certainly uh, 
willing to do that on August 12th or thereabouts. I guess it is August 12th. I um, understand Dr. Gordon McIntosh will be the facilitator and recently attended a session with him, so that uh, bodes well, I think, for the process as much as anything else. So, uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Motion's carried on August 12th, 9, 9 to 3. <laughs> <laughs> I'll report back. Okay, um, brings us to the Rainbow Connection. Move receipt. Second. On receipt, all those in favor? And motions carry. Discussion. Any discussion? I, I, I just wanted on the cost of it, um, that um, knowing how much it costs to put the signage on the bike lanes, um, would it be a similar? Yeah. Um, I believe they were they were going to, if I may. Yeah. So they were looking at fundraising themselves. Mm -hmm. Staff, have you given any consideration to this? No, we are waiting for direction from Council. If, uh, if Council wants a report, uh, you know, obviously there are going to be costs and, and issues associated with maintenance of uh, such a one-off. Um, you know, the report, if, if you ask for one, would also include concerns about are we going to provide crosswalks for everyone that asks for one of a different significance. So uh, that's, those are some of the comments off the top of our, our head right now. The crosswalk is currently already in, right? Yes. So it's not like we're waiting to put a crosswalk in. We've already got one there, so it would be taking one out and putting a new one in. Well, be yeah. repainting it perhaps or painting it different color. Currently it meets the standards of the white. Right. Yeah. Uh, however you want to describe that. The ones that uh, obviously referenced in the uh, photograph are at right angles to that. So is council wishing to have staff report back? I'd be interested to know the cost. I know yeah. the one in Victoria has been well received. Um, yeah. You know how much it will need repainting. I notice even in the photos in the paper that's starting to show the tire marks. And so yeah. Well, the other thing I've noticed with a lot of, since we went to the, was it non, whatever it is, paint the new stuff, um, we don't tend to paint our yellow lines in front of fire hydrants as much anymore, and some of our not because the paint just doesn't, it, it just disappears. Right? I mean, it, it doesn't. Doesn't work. I guess. This is well, annually, my we concerns have the paint lines of all kinds. You right. see that through town. But even even in no parking areas. So you know, I guess that would be another concern. Mm -hmm. If you do this, how long does that paint even last for? So, you know. All right. Well, um, the letter has been received, and uh, a request for a staff report would be in order. I think perhaps. Can we carry a motion for that? Second. Any further questions? And we could have a report back on that by the next council meeting. See you. Mm -hmm. All right. So all those in favor? Now we've got to listen to the music. <laughs> this is somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> that Hawaiian guy. Yeah. Anyway, um, we'll move on with the... Uh, Next items, did we vote on that by then? Yes, we did. Thank you. Next items really are just reports from members of council. Um, I haven't been around council for a little while, so I'll just highlight a few things going back about a month. Uh, as you know, I was appointed to the climate leadership team, and we've had two face-to-face -face meetings and two uh, teleconference meetings. And on Friday, there will be released a uh, public consultation process around climate action and it will be a quite interesting survey for people to participate in, provide input over the next 30 days from Friday and it will form part of our discussions going forward and the uh, development of some action plan items by the end of October. At that point the cabinet and the premier will take that into consideration and 
in all likelihood to make some announcements in relation to the Paris talks in December, following which there will be further public consultation and uh, ultimately uh, implementation of what are recommendations through the budget process next spring. So I'll say this, it's been a very interesting process involving environmental groups, uh, energy industry groups, local governments, First Nations, and of course the provincial government. And a very steep learning curve on my part and other part to see how these things are put together and uh, quite topical as you might imagine uh, with all the things going on around us. And not a day goes by when you don't hear about uh, some of the challenges that governments and communities are dealing with, not just with uh, weather conditions, but just uh, dealing with energy choices, generally speaking. So we'll report back on that, but look for something as of Friday for you and others to participate in, and I'll try to make sure that the link to that survey gets circulated, and hopefully it can be shared broadly, because the more public input into that, the better. Uh, I also participated in, uh, when I was in Vancouver, for one of those meetings with a mayor's and chair's uh, training session with Gordon McIntosh, as I mentioned earlier, two-day session, 36 mayors and chairs, and really good uh, process of networking as well as learning from others so their experiences, dealing with uh, uh, regional boards and councils, and a well worthwhile uh, process, and I think some of the material from that I have circulated, yes. and there may be more to follow. Uh, the CAO and I and the town engineer met with representatives of the Ministry of Transportation and Highways here in town, largely to just touch base on some of their projects that are happening on our boundaries. Of course, most recently with the bike lane improvement on Guthrie. And our town engineer and representatives from highways will be coordinating some of the uh, you know, access issues, particularly as we look at our boundaries. And of course, encouragement for improved uh, pedestrian, cycling, and motorist safety in the uh, rural areas. So that was a really good meeting, I thought, and CEO and I, uh, and the engineer, were quite pleased to have that opportunity. HMCS Quadra, they had a change of command ceremony last Saturday. Commander Mike McCormick has given way after four years to Commander Martin Hacker, who was the executive officer and is now the commanding officer of HMCS Quadra. That was attended by the Chief of the Reserves, um, Rear Admiral Jennifer Bennett, who is somebody that I met way back in the early 80s as an Naval Reserve Officer. She has uh, come quite a long ways to uh, being the Chief of the Reserves. It was nice to see her again, and a great ceremony, although was held inside because of the weather. Today, this afternoon, I participated in a conference call for Multi-Material BC, and that is the uh, relation to the end report that was released at the end of June. And there's a plan to have a meeting between the Minister of Environment, MMBC, and ourselves, being the UBCM representatives, to talk about ways and means we can get other communities on board with that program. Um, they've got a good track record so far, but there are a number of communities still on the outside looking in, so we're trying to bring those communities into the system, including ours. And those are the highlights for me, so I'll move on to Council Margaret. Thank you. Um, well, I had the pleasure of serving as the ambassador at the Seafood Festival, and congratulations to the EDS, they did an excellent job of organizing that good turnout of volunteers, and I think their numbers exceeded well over a thousand, so they did a great job. Also attending, I'm not sure that this was a really good service for the town, but I attended the, the Gala Seafood Dinner, which was excellent. I heartily recommend everyone get a ticket next year. And also, Vancouver Island Regional Library is preparing their strategic plan for the year 2016 to 20, and they're doing this by collaborating with the, with the communities. And Comox, of course, obviously, was participating, and our stakeholder consultation took place on June the 25th at our library. It was a good representation from our town, I felt, uh, and some excellent ideas were presented. I, I won't go through all of them, 
there will be a report coming at the end of December, which and all of those ideas will be discussed at that point. But there were some, some issues that I felt are worthy of our, our attention, and that was that our library has been so successful that it is now too small. Mm. And so the suggestion, <laughs> the suggestion was that, well, uh, we should all relocate to the Harborview Center. The city town hall should move there, uh, pardon me, <laughs> should move there, the library and the museum. And then it would work really well for everyone. So, and that went around to several of the, several of the discussion groups. Also, uh, more emphasis on digital, of course. And also, the last big item that they spent a great deal of time chatting about was we do need better signage. Folks are coming to our town, and they don't know where our beautiful library is. So, and that concludes. It was an excellent turn. Excellent. Councilor mm -hmm. Kennedy. Yes, I represented the town at the uh, Glacier View and, and G.P. Banyi High School graduation ceremonies and joined Councillor Russ Arnett at the Isfeld uh, High School no. graduation. No. Uh, I also attended the Maple, uh, Maple Lake uh, uh, Committee meeting on June 26th. I attended the Comox Valley Multicultural Concert at Sims Park on June 27th. And I attended the Comox Valley Homeless Coalition Workshop on July 6th, and that is my report at this time. Great, thank you. That's the price. Yes, uh, I attended the ADICC executive meeting in Nanaimo as uh, president. I also attended the ADICC solid waste workshop as an ex officio member. That's uh, the whole of uh, the ADICC area, nine regional districts coming together to look how we can uh, work more efficiently and cost-effectively on solid waste. Um, I also went to the uh, Seafood Gala, and I have to say it was fabulous. Um, I've also attended um, Regional District Sewer, Water, Sports Commission, Committee of the Whole, and Board meetings. Uh, I think um, Councillor Grant, who is the chair of the uh, Sports Commission, will be talking about how we have settled with the United Steel Workers um, in the collective bargaining, which uh, is always great when that happens. And, um, and just a little more on the water, uh, Comox Valley water system, just to give some sense to how usage goes up. In, in November, we used 15 million liters, and then stage two, it jumps to 50 million. And, and just to show how people actually are responding, stage three, it dropped down to 30 uh, million meters. So That's per day, you're talking about. Per day, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and the, the, just the, the river is the lowest ever. It's, uh, it, it is very alarming. Yeah. Even the rain we're having now, although it's very refreshing, really doesn't make any dent on it. Uh, we are looking to renew the lease on the regional district corporate offices for um, another two years, potentially four, and exploring how we can move into our own building without having to rent in the future, and um, supporting um, a cycling network, uh, proposing to write to the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure on looking at a cycling network as part of the North Courtney Connector. Uh, the Fixed Wing Search and Rescue Training Centre, and fortunately the regional district isn't, doesn't have the adaptability that we had <coughs> to be able to um, forgive um, a payment or to return payment. Mm -hmm. Councillor Grant did an excellent job at looking at every annual, but basically okay. the way it's set up. It's I'm still not sure they understood what we were trying to do there. <laughs> But no is the answer to every question, yeah. although there is a lot of support and, and, and there is a proposal going to the board that we write a, a letter of, um, of support. And Just uh, sorry, on that one issue, um, still trying to have a meeting with the uh, Minister of Finance in Victoria on around the provincial side of that. So if there's anything forthcoming from there, you let me know as soon as you do, because I can take that down or we can yeah. provide that as a follow-up. So it will have to, it was the committee of the whole, so it will sure. to the board. Yeah, whenever you come, come back with it. Yeah. They, they kept calling it a grant and aid we were looking for, yeah. and they didn't quite, I, I couldn't seem to get them to understand that it was a deferral. Right. And it was.
focus only on the new buildings. And I, I think maybe the message, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe they were correct, but I wasn't clear that the message was through to this. I'll wrestle it down. Yeah, so. Okay, great. Thanks for talking. Uh, uh, I was also part of uh, two trips to look at Perseverance Creek uh, with Timber West um, as vice chair of the Water Committee and to see how we can deal with turbidity after the letter we got from the uh, Dr. Enns, who was wishing us to cap uh, the bottom of Perseverance Creek, which is quite a stunning proposal given that the creek is a long way down. And uh, um, The second time we went out was um, a huge party of about 17, and we had uh, uh, the staff and the mayor of Cumberland Dr. Enns and David Day Cherry, uh, Diane Minica was there from the MLA's office, RD staff, and, uh, and uh, Bob Wells as the committee chair, and Timber West. So we were looking at the spillway and the, the whole lay of the land out there and how Cumberland's water system fits into our water system. They're part of our watershed, you know, a small watershed within our larger one. So, there is going to be a follow-up meeting to discuss the findings and see where we go from here. We can't meet the uh, timelines of uh, Dr. Enns, who was, um, June was when we were supposed to present uh, a plan of action. However, significant work has been done and uh, we, we move forward to find a cost-effective way to prevent the turbidity in the future. Uh, I attended the CFEDS AGM uh, visited along with the rest of council a new public works building, which are very good, and so we came under budget. It's, um, uh, I think we can all be proud of that. I met with one or two constituents about individual pro proposals that they're putting forward, and um, and just recently I attended two sessions of strategic planning with the Comox Archives and Museum Executive. And out of that, I'm working with the museum to create a permanent display to honor Macline and his huge contribution to Comox, as well as his much wider contribution to natural history within Canada and North America. I have in the past talked to Al Fraser, and he is going to be trying to save as much of the original materials that are salvageable uh, from the buildings, which... Uh, could be part of the display um, and or within projects in the park. Um, and I think uh, we must also remember that Mac Lang's original home, uh, Baybrook, was built on a huge midden where human burial took place. And uh, I would like us to work with the Comox First Nations to honor and restore this site, uh, which was according to records also the site of the chief's home. Oh. And um, yeah, and, um, and I'd like us to work with the museum to develop interpretive signage that tell Mac Lang's story within both the properties, the favorite property which we as a town purchased, and uh, and also within the Mac Lang Park property which we were was so indebted to Mac Lang when he requested it to the town. And that is my report. Thank you, Brian. Councillor Swift. Okay. Um, I attended the regular uh, Pilbert board meeting, and uh, they're a busy group at this time of the year. Um, they have had their first Thursday concert, um, and it was very well received. There is a possibility of going for dinner before the concerts, but you need to have a reservation. So if you're interested in doing that, make sure you do follow it up with the reservation. The next concert is the 23rd, and it's Dublin to Delhi, and they are expecting it to be very popular. Um, you can get uh, tickets online as well as at the door. Um, as far as the Filbert Festival is concerned, just a reminder that everyone that's an employee of the town is uh, entitled to a one-day free pass at the festival, and you just need to provide um, identification when you uh, arrive at the gate. And um, you choose whatever day you'd like if you haven't already gone the pass. Uh, and if you haven't tried the tea house yet this year, I would encourage you to do so. Tria's doing a really good job. 
but their hours are not quite as regular as they have been in the past, so I need to check and make sure there's not a special event going on, um, and they have a short week uh, for this year at least, so please check it out because you don't want to be disappointed. Uh, I also attended the uh, Philbert Volunteer Coffee, and they have a group of really dedicated volunteers that tend to shop for their coffee uh, time, and their gift shop is continuing to thrive and make annual contributions to the society. So it's, it's uh, really a, been a good endeavor. And yesterday, I attended the Sage Commission. So that'd be to report that. And the tea house is serving Cumberland beer. Yes, yeah. use it now. Yeah. It's, uh, no, it's great. It's, great. <laughs> it's all part of economic development. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Well, sir, turn up. Yes, uh, on your behalf, I attended the graduation ceremony for the Mark uh, Isbell School, which was a nice um, event. And uh, a couple meetings, the um, Community Justice Centre, I attended a board meeting the other day, and nautical days, and on the Sunday, they are requesting again that council uh, mans the um, uh, information booth. So I'll be getting to each of you to see what times you're available, and uh, be two uh, two at a time throughout the day, and store knowledge. Looks like a great program I saw today. Lots yes, yeah. Stuff. yeah, yeah. A lot of hard work has gone into that. If there will be a beer garden at this one. Okay. I don't know. If yeah, Cumberland, Cumberland Brewery Beer will be there, but uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. All right, great, thank you. Councilor Grant. All right, well, I attended the water meeting yesterday, sewer regional district meeting, uh, economic development AGM, where I got uh, let go of my, released of my duties in the executive, and uh, Dina Simpkins has taken over, and I think she'll do a great job. She's the uh, chair of the Courtney BIA, so um, she'll, she'll take over from that. Volunteered at Seafood Festival and went to many of the workshops there. And I think Barbara covered pretty much everything else that we've done. Um, the only other thing that I would say on water is that I think that uh, that we need to really get lobbying our senior governments to see what we can get for some funding to help out with some of these things. I mean, they are in part mandating what we do on here, and um, I would hate to. I would hate to just leave, not leave that, or, you know, to, to close that door. I, I think it's uh, it's quite critical, and, and as I said before, I think there's just a pile of misinformation and a lot of people that don't really understand our system, and, and uh, I would really hope that they took heed of that and will start communicating that a little better. Has the Water Committee made any uh, requests to meet with uh, any cabinet ministers during the UBCM? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Okay. So... But another little interesting stat on the water uh, that, that I heard yesterday was that we have about seven cubic meters of water leaving the lake per second mm -hmm. and one coming in. So it's dropping at six times as it should. And without a major amount of rain, mm -hmm. we're going to have a problem. So. The other stat I heard is that we have capacity in our reservoirs, big uh, above ground reservoirs for about 30 million cubic meters. Yes. And when we're not at stage three, we're going through 40 million or 50 or whatever the number is. So we're cycling through yeah. a lot of water in a day. So now, thankfully, we're hearing that we're back down to more modest levels, but still, that's a lot of water. Mm -hmm. uh, double, basically, rather than triple what we're using during mm -hmm. the winter. So it is an awareness piece for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so and I think, by and large, most members of the community are getting it, uh, not just local press, but uh, Provincial, regional, the whole island. Mm -hmm. We're at stage four drought. Mm -hmm. All these different stages are a little confusing, but well, I think it's the idea is that we have to be wise. Well, and that was another uh, thing that we brought up at the Water Commission was to try and streamline our system. There's, there's Vancouver has four stages. We have three. Cowichan has four. They're all different. Like, mm -hmm. if we're going to do this, let's streamline it a little bit so we're all yeah. singing out of the same hymn book here a little bit. And, and I think what it is. I think everybody sort of gets the fact that we have a water problem this year. What they don't get is why. I mean, we have a big lake full of water there. How come How come we can't access it? And I think that's really the piece that needs to be brought out. So. And thank you for your service to Seabeds over the last six years. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.
good picture in the paper. Mm -hmm. What was I in there? Yep. <laughs> got a nice black. Oh, a nice black. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's what you get, right? Gold it's black. the black. Yes. Yeah, the golden handshake. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any cool. questions from media at this time? Seeing none. Any questions from members of the public at this time? Seeing none, uh, we have no in-camera meetings. A motion to adjourn will be in order. Second.